Jan Ezra here. I'm um, here this morning with Yushi Shen, who's a research engineer, video engineer with uh, Twitch. And we're going to talk about what Twitch says from a codec perspective, which is uh, a changing dynamic. Hey, Yushi, thanks for meeting me this morning. Oh, um, oh thank you, Jane. Um, uh, my name is Rishi. I work for Twitch. Um, so if you don't know Twitch, Twitch is a live streaming platform. Um, basically, our content is more on esports and the gaming. Um, according to twitchtracker.com, uh, so public information, um, uh, at our peak we have 140,000 concurrent channels and our peak uh, viewership is 4, four million. Um, so talking about the Kodak strategy, um, our content is more interactive, uh, low latency, uh, and we have a, because we have a lot of channels, we basically have two categories. Uh, for, the head, for the head content, um, we, so we are releasing VP9 next month, um, and in the future, uh, we're thinking H.264, VP9, and uh, AV1 when the ecosystem become mature. But head content, it's okay to streaming multiple formats because their viewership is huge. So streaming multiple formats, although increase our cost, uh, it still actually save our traffic cost. So it's still worthwhile. But for the tail content, uh, it's very different. Uh, we can only afford streaming one single content, uh, single format. So our strategy is uh, currently still doing H.264 using hardware, high density hardware solution. But we're hoping um, towards 2024, 2025, the AV1 ecosystem is ready. We want to switch to AV1 100%. Uh, Did you say 2024 and 2025? 2024, this is our projection right now. But on the other hand, so as I said, uh, our AV1 release will be, uh, for the head content will be a lot sooner. We are hoping 2022, 2023 is we are going to release uh, AV1 for the head content. But for head content, we will continue to stream dual format AV1, H.264. But for the tail content, we are hoping towards uh, five, five years from now, the AV1 whole ecosystem, every, sub, every five year old device support AV1, then we will be switching to AV1 100%. So you, you, you are primarily a live platform and you're looking, when you say head content, you mean the, the primary content that gets the most views or? That's right, yeah. So for example, eSports content uh, and also, yeah, head, uh, head broadcasters. Okay, so you've recently been considering switching to, um, to BP9. Is that hardware, software? Are you looking at both? What's the decision there? That's a very good question. Uh, for VP9, well, I mean, as I said, we are looking at compression gain. So uh, for VP9 right now, we are using FPGA. We have evaluated software. We haven't got data that the software can deliver the same uh, compression gain. And our bar is uh, X264 median uh, as a reference, at least 25% less bit rate uh, than X264 median. Um, uh, but we also have roadmap to 35%. But this is our bar. Okay, so you're saying that the VP9 that was generated with the FPGA encoder was same quality at 25% lower data rate? That's right, that's right, yeah. Okay, and that's a live transmission? That's a live transmission, yeah. Okay. So one of, the, one of the fun conversations you and I had uh, a few months back was talking about, uh, because you're such a big platform, integrating um, VBR encoding as opposed to CBR encoding caused like this massive wave. Can, yeah. you, can, can, can you go into the decision you make about VBR versus CBR as a live yeah. platform? That's very right, yeah. So, um, so one thing maybe uh, people don't know that Twitch actually maintain a private CDN. We have our own uh, replication, our backbone, and edge servers. And we're signing the pairing contract with RSPs. Uh, according to our operation, um, we, we, we don't like BBR. And this is pretty much to do is if we book a pipe, basically a certain bandwidth to the RSPs. If the video is uh, VBI, it's very difficult for us to control the quality of service because our video mapping system doesn't know that how to how many viewers we can put it into this pipe if the if the bit rate is, is changing. So this is very bit different from VOD. The VOD is peop, different people at the same time watching different content. But for live, it's different people at the same time watching the same content. So any VBI is actually going to confuse our video mapping system that, that we don't know how, how many users that we shall put into a, a pipe. And, and for the most part, just uh, I'm sure this is clear to most viewers, but you're you're streaming, you're getting one stream in from a remote gamer, and then you're uh, trans transcoding that into multiple streams. What's your typical ladder look like? Yeah. So uh, at the moment, we are uh, we are ingesting 1080p60 from our from our broadcast. So uh, what bit rate? Um, so it varies depending on the broadcast the upload bandwidth. Uh, typically between six and 8.5 megabits per second. Okay. Then we will transcode it into different bit rates. 
uh, 720p 60 at 3 megabits per second, then 720p 30 at 2 megabits per second, then 480p with all the way down to 160p at about 200 kilobits per second. Okay. What's your view of objective quality metrics? Which metrics do you use and which do you trust? Yeah, actually that's a very good research topic. Actually there's some active research going on right now. Um, uh, right now we are we are doing a combination of PSR, SSIM, and uh, NVMAF. But uh, what we trust most uh, at this moment for Twitch is uh, our my eyes and my colleagues' eyes. Um, so PSNR kind of give us some reference about, um, it can pick up some uh, um, obvious uh, uh, encoding error, but uh, still we, we more than 50% rely on our golden eyes. Okay. I, I had a conversation with a compressionist from a big OTT house last night, and he was talking about using different encoding parameters depending on the rung and the ladder. You know, maybe more noise reduction in lower rungs and maybe sharpness. And are you doing any of that, or are you looking at any of that? Uh, right now, we are not doing image pre-processing. Uh, that is that is something we right now don't have resource to do. But that's a very interesting direction. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there's some. My take is for the people that I write for, which is typically the you know not your level and certainly not the level of the guy I was speaking with last night. But people, you know, I stop at the preset. You know, here's what each preset does. It's got a a combination of encoding parameters, but looking at the individual, he just really opened up uh, an interesting thought because you know the lower quality streams, you're going to have a lot more scaling, you're going to have a lot more, you know. So, what do you do to improve the quality of that stream that you wouldn't think about for the 1080p pass through or even the 720p stream? So, it, and I have no idea. I just wondered if, if you had looked at that. Uh, we haven't looked at that, and probably if I, I probably need to evaluate the ROI, the return on investment, uh, to see. Uh, to quantify whether this is uh, really helping us. And also to do, okay, so another thing is uh, most of our viewers are watching 1080p60. That's right. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't have data to tell you that uh, whether, how to quantify the return of interest. So when you say most of your viewers, I mean, can you tell us a percentage? Is that, you know, 95% or, you know, 62%? Uh, or? Yeah. I don't have the I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, uh, but it's definitely more than fifty percent. And depending on the, depending on region, like a uh, USA, it's pretty good internet. Uh, and, and what about other than you know what are your big regions other than USA, and what do the numbers look like there? So in Asia Pacific, actually pretty good. Uh, like uh, Singapore, Korea are very good. Uh, certain region, Latin America, uh, some East Europe, but, uh, um, but nevertheless, uh, still for our across the board, more than fifty percent of viewers are watching 1080p60. Uh, and this number is a lot higher in in, in like the USA and, and the Western Europe. Yeah, and that makes it tough to invest that much uh, research into the lower quality streams. Yeah, we we actually did some work on the on the lowest quality. So before our 160p was about 500 kilobits per second. We actually did some work. It's more on the audio side. We transcode audio to a, to a lower bit rate. Okay. Do you have any magic numbers for PSNR or SSIM or, or VMAP? Okay. Uh, it depends on. It depend really depends on uh, on the content. Um, mm, sorry, I I cannot have. I don't have a number okay. of my hand right okay. now. Yeah. Um, but you're you know. All right. Well, let's 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 close it there. We have an appointment to get to Yushi. Thanks for sharing all that information, and um, you know, have a great show. All right. Okay. Thank you very much.